Hi, Shelly here. Hey, today I got the idea that I wanted to see if I could make an art journal. And I was trying to think of what I've got that I could use to do this. And I thought, you know, I've got these old atlases that we used to use when we used to travel uh, before we had phones to, to look up and GPS. And uh, so I had a couple of these old ones. I've been using them for different uh, pages out of them to do different things. But I have one that I haven't pulled pages out of that I want to see if I can make an art journal book. I think it's a great size. I want something larger. And I don't know. It could be a complete disaster. And if it is, then I won't post this ever. <laughs> But if it's great, you might want to try it. We'll see how it goes. Thanks. So come on along with me and uh, let's see if I can pull it off. So here's what's left of my book. And what I want to do to begin with, I think, is to remove the staples. Because I'm thinking my, I don't want my art journal to be this thick. But what I'm thinking is I might be able to make two. Yes, I sure love these map pages for collaging and stuff. Okay, so I wonder how many pages I've got here. Do not know. So I think what we're going to do is just eye it and see if we can do half. And it looks like to me what everybody's doing is they take these half pages, fold them, and then put them together this way so that when you open them within the book, you don't have a, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I wonder if I should gesso them first. Seems like it'd be a lot easier if I just just show just so <laughs> them first. The paper's a nice weight, and I love the size. So I think I'm gonna go to my big table and and uh, open them up and start gessoing which is gonna take me probably a couple of, I don't know, several hours or a couple of days. Cause I think what I'm gonna do is do, I'll do one side of a bunch of them for as much as I can put around in my studio. And then once those dry, I'll flip them and do the rest of them. But it's gonna take me a while to get all of these done. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll get back and talk about what we're gonna do next folded them all and then put them together because the way I'm gonna do, I know that a lot of people uh, bind their books in different ways, but I am going to try, I can't remember the gal that I saw do it this way, but I really thought that that suited me better. So that's what I'm going to do because I'm kind of lazy and I don't wanna do all this sewing. All right, I've got this <laughs> box here so that I can stand this up and glue this. And I've got a piece of muslin fabric here that I folded and ironed so that I could know where the center is. I'm not trying to be exact here. I just wanna be, get it pretty good. You see some glue on here. I glued it the first time and realized that I had made a mistake that I needed to make sure that I had some cardstock in here so this would be a little bit thicker, my spine, because my book's gonna be filled with that kind of stuff. So, I, my, glue, my glue had not sat yet, so I kind of undid most of it and Stuffed it with cardstock. It's quite a bit thicker now. Like I said, I've never done this before, so I'm learning. Okay. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to put a little bit of my beacon glue out. 
because it's fast grab. Now I'm gonna come in with my Aileen's. I don't know, again, I don't think the average person needs to do all this, but just because I don't know what I'm doing and I'm a little paranoid, I wanna make sure I've got good coverage. If it was smaller, I wouldn't have this big gap in the middle. But this thing is going to be a large journal. Okay, now I'm going to put my fabric on, open it up, press it down, do this middle part that's a little wider here. And then she went back over it with glue again, so we'll go okay. Make sure we got a good bit of glue. This will all be covered, so I'm not worried about how pretty it looks. Sure that's well saturated now we're not gluing down the flaps until later so we're gonna stop right there and then I'm gonna put a clip right in the middle that I'm gonna leave there just for a while and then I'll come back and remove that before it gets stuck permanently and just to kind of hold that middle section together okay now we'll dry it and see what we've got so I've got my two edges and my spine. And I'm just going to duct tape it all together. The gal I watched did not do this. She did a different, did it a different way. And I highly recommend her way. I thought it was very cool, but this is what I'm doing. Right or wrong, <laughs> this is how I'm doing it. <laughs> I want this to be pretty sturdy. I'm gonna throw lots of things at it. And I want it to be able to handle it. So now when I close it, it will be like that, okay? I think that's going to be good. Now, I want to shorten up my fabric quite a bit. I've cut a lot of extra. I'm, you know, I'm a little bit cautious. This is the first time I've done something. I'm, I'm being kind of careful about how I do it. So I'm going to go, again, eyeing it. I think that's still too much, possibly. But I think the more I have glued on and holding on, the stronger it is. This is what I'm thinking in my mind. That may not be the case. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm making a big mistake, but this is this is how I perceive it. So, I'm going to go ahead and glue this on. Let's cut our corners at an angle. too close and then go a little bit closer. Put my glue in here. I put five squirts of water in here. Let's see if I can loosen this up just a little bit.
flip it over. And I want it just so that corner will come up around there. Stretch out my fabric a little bit, and that's all right. This thing is heavy. <laughs> All right, we're dry enough, I think, to continue. Now we're going to get this lined up. I think the way to do it is to put the glue first. And I'm gonna use the Gorilla Glue this time. It doesn't dry clear, but I want this to be super heavy duty. let this set over in my box for about an hour and then I'm going to come back and glue the, um, the little wings down. All right, my glue is drying nicely and but it's getting late so I want to do my last little bit of gluing for the night so it can so this can be dried completely by tomorrow morning. Then I can decorate my cover. So where I've glued it here, still a little bit damp even after overnight, probably because I left it closed up and didn't open it like this. I wanna cover that white space and the fabric. So I've decided because I am on a mission to use up my deli paper, I wanna do that here. So the only way I could figure out how to do it was to do strips. So I took a bunch of my jelly papers that were in the same color family, these blues, and cut them into 11 by 11 and a half length by three inches wide. And then I have a little bit, I have four extras that are a little bit thinner that are gonna be my bottom piece. And so what I wanna do now is go through and decide how I want to make stacks of four uh, six strips, I need four of them. And um, so that's what we're gonna do right now. I am using Mod Podge, watered down Mod Podge for this application.
But the other thing I like to do is take a couple of baby wipes and gently pounce all over. That gives my texture the same look all over and it uh, picks up any of those big globs and helps it dry a little bit faster but still gives me good coverage. Now I'm going to take, I've got a little bit of gray and dark gray and black here, and I'm gonna go in and just make the back look better. I'm gonna cover up this white muslin, put just a little bit of an edge on my papers to finish them off. Nothing fancy. I originally uh set this up I was I don't know why I thought putting the book the right way was important to me but now I don't care <laughs> and remember the smaller piece on the uh, bottom was supposed to be on the bottom but as I have gotten this dry and taken a better look at it my back is a little bit I don't know if you could see it but it's kind of concave remember this is just an old box and I don't know if I can maybe maybe once this dries completely I'll be able to can I be able to do that I don't know but this side's better and so I'm calling this the front I don't think in the big scope of thing anybody's gonna care and these pages will all be covered up and no one will know that this was the top or that was the bottom or Nobody's gonna know this but me, and I don't care. What I want is the front to be more flat, and I don't want it to be this concave. Like I said, maybe in time, uh, this still feels like it's a little bit malleable, so maybe in time that will flatten out. I'm really not too worried about it. So I think I'm going to call this the front. Now watch, probably with what I'm about to do to it, this will become <laughs> concave too. I don't know, like I said, I've never done this before. I'm experimenting, so. Now I wanna make up a couple of different blues here. like to wing it. Doesn't always go my way. All right, we've got two distinct blues all in the same family. I think that is going to look great with our dark blue. Yeah, I'm going to use all the blues just kind of make a nice little background. I don't know if I'm going to go as move my stencil around as much. Maybe we'll just put it on there. I want to decoupage some of these flowers on. So a couple things I think I want to do first. What I like about these is that you just move them a little bit, cut off the painted end. 
move it down so you got about a half inch sticking out and you're ready to go again. Let's try this. I want something fairly small just to kind of bring it all together. That is what we needed. Put a coat of Mod Podge over everything because I want to seal it and I want my surface to be the same all over. I did not like what I first did. So I have covered it up last night before I went to bed with a bunch of off-white paint and I'm going to begin again. I know you're going, I wish you would have let us see that, but it was really, and the video would have been super long had I left all that in. So I'm just going to start from here and go forward. I also like the fact that they're both going to be completely different. So I'm going to try to use some of these and then I'm not sure if I'm going to use, I've got a couple of pages that I've torn out of a, another atlas that I had. I'm not sure if I'm going to use those or not yet, but I think I'm going to use these. I'm not, I'm kind of talking a little bit quieter today because my husband is on nights and he is currently sleeping. So I'm trying not to wake him up but continue to record. blue here. Small brush. Going to come in with some numbers.
decided that I want to add some butterflies. Now I'm going to get my Moroccan stencil out. And just put that in a few spots. All right, I want to take my general's marks on anything and see if I can just define these just a little bit.
All right, I'm going to, I love this now. That's what I needed. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do anything else to it other than another coat of Mod Podge just to seal everything. So I wanted a nice golden color, so I used a little bit of my orange and my yellow. I want a little bit different red. Probably shouldn't be doing this on my journal. I'm gonna take some brighter red and mix a little bit of the darker red with it. Well, here are my finished journals. My two art journals made from a Rand McNally Road Atlas and a little bit of ca cardboard. And I am super excited about these. They are, they total 15 and a half by 11 and a half which gives me a nice big surface to work on, which is what I prefer. My gessoed map pages are a wonderful uh, surface to start working on. I just love the feel of the pages. And I've got, I think, what did I say? I've got 20 pages, I don't know what it is 20 pages front and back so I have 40 something I don't know it's gonna be a big stinking book hey thanks for watching and um, coming along with me in this adventure and if you are looking for some stencils please check out my pay hip shop I hope you'll join me on my next video thanks bye